It says, oh, well, we couldn't know better because nobody else did. Then what are you for? Okay. Can you just clarify for us on this thing about homosexuality? The Catholic Church condemns the act but not the individual. Did Jesus Christ himself actually say anything about homosexuality? No. Uh, that is a wrong question in this regard. Oh. <laughs> no, because, no, because uh, the, we are not aware about homosexuality, the morality of homosexuality being a matter that drew the attention of Jesus. Uh, but this, Jesus certainly spoke about, about the Ten Commandments and adultery. Uh, and uh, I do not think we should deny the church the right to propound its own doctrines. You are not obliged to take let's, it. Let's hear some more from the floor and then we'll come. Yeah, go on. Our life is based on uh, the life yeah. of Jesus Christ, not on uh, emotion or on based on the worldly, the way the world is going. So I thank all the people who are listening and the, I think the message we are getting here will lead us to live a good life. Okay, thanks. Let's just get through some more comments. Okay, yeah, briefly, please, briefly. I spent 38 years of my life as a Catholic and then I saw the light. And um, my life now is going back and forth to Africa and next month I go to Uganda and I'm working on trying to stop mothers dying in pregnancy and childbirth. What I'm saying is, please, please, reverse the rule on condoms and family planning and contraception and right. save more lives. Let's keep this moving. Briefly, please. As a Catholic, I'm actually very pleased to be here this evening to hear two sides of a very important argument. And the positive thing I take away is that the Catholic Church can take the opportunity to reflect upon these comments and that we look for the future. And it's by actually accepting these comments and by looking for a way forward that the Church can actually grow and have a more important part of the world. All right. Thank you. I don't want to take any more questions from the floor, really. But, panel, what I propose is this. You've heard the points that are raised. Some of them are comments, some of them are questions. You're going to have a few minutes to make your closing statements. Please incorporate these questions that you heard in your closing statements. Because audience, I want you to vote again. Now, for those of you who are watching at home, if you'd like a briefing booklet on some of those issues that you've heard raised today, then please go to um, www.intelligencesquared.com and you can download that booklet. Anybody can do it and it's absolutely uh, free. Okay, so everybody is doing that. So while you're all doing that, it's going to take a little bit of time. We're going to hear the closing statements incorporating some of the points that you, the audience, raised. And we're going to do it in reverse order this time. And it's, um, it's going to be Stephen Fry first. Um, well, it's been a really interesting debate, and I, I, I love, I've loved some of the questions from the floor. Um, I suppose I'm slightly disappointed that uh, Anne Whittingham in particular should say, oh, I knew they'd bring up condoms and child rape and yeah. homosexuality. It's a bit like a burglar in court, so you would bring up that burglary and that manslaughter. You never mention the fact I'd give my father a birthday present, you know? It's, yes, yes, are you getting the message? There is a reason we hammer home these issues, because they matter. There's such an opportunity, owning a billion souls at baptism. It's such an opportunity to do something remarkable to make this planet better. And it's an opportunity that is constantly and arrogantly being avoided, and I'm sorry for that. Okay, thank you. Final statement from Conservative MP Anne Widdicombe for the motion that the Catholic Church is a force for good in the world. Right, we have had all the usual stuff about how uh, the Catholic Church uh, being against condoms has apparently caused untold misery. As I've said, our opponents always try to home in on sex when the teachings of the Church, which are after all only about the stability of family the maintenance of fidelity, the virtue of chastity. When the church teaches that as one part of all its teaching, I do sometimes despair 
at the way that these debates always, always come back to that. So I'm very pleased to have been here tonight, despite the fact that I think the incoming poll was slightly discouraging. Uh, I'm very pleased to have been here, to have been here with the Archbishop and with the two gentlemen opposite, and thank you for the opportunity. Okay. Against the motion, Mr. Hitchin. Unanswered questions. Amazing. No one, though they were asked repeatedly, would say whether they thought Stephen Fry, my friend, was in a state of mortal sin or not. They wouldn't tell you. Something about the question brought out their inner coward. Well, I say that homosexuality is not just a form of sex, it's a form of love, and it deserves our respect for that reason. That if, if when, I, when my children were young, I'd have been proud to have Stephen as their babysitter, and I'd told them they were lucky. And if anyone came to my door as a babysitter wearing holy orders, I'd call first a cab and then the police. <laughs> Final statement from our final speaker, Archbishop of Abuja, John Onayaken. You've got to make your final pitch now to the audience. Thank you very much. Um, I just want to draw the attention of the audience back to the topic. Yeah. And the topic is quite clear. The Catholic Church is a force for good in the world. It did not say it is the only source for good. It did not say it has always been a source for good. It's not in the past tense, it's in the present tense. It is a source for good. I, can, I still have not seen how they have in any way shown that the Catholic Church is not a force for good in the world. I can say all kinds of things about other people, but I think it is fair enough that um, when it comes to what does the church say about condoms, what does it say about homosexuality, what does we say about women priests, is, we need to take the trouble to find, find out exactly what it is saying, not what the, the newspapers are saying that we are saying. Uh, we never said that the Catholic Church is perfect. We continue to do our best to be as close as we can to Jesus Christ and his, what he wants us to be and to constantly be a force for good in the world. Right. And I thank you. Archbishop, thank you. You've all voted again. Now the moment of truth panel. Let me remind everybody that before the debate when everybody came in, this is how you voted. For the motion that the Catholic Church is a force for good in the world, 678. Against the motion, 1,102. And the undecideds, the don't knows, were 346. This is how you voted subsequently. For the motion that the Catholic Church is a force for good, from 678, it's gone to 268. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Against the motion, it's now 1,876. And you can see that doesn't leave very many don't knows. It's 34 undecided. So, commiserations, Archbishop and Anne Widdicombe. Congratulations, Stephen Fry and Christopher Hitchens. Thank you all. From me, Zain Abadawi, goodbye.